Hi, hello everyone. So Tom and I are back with another video, but today it's a bit of a special video. Um, we have a guest, Ojuice Save, and Ojuice was kind enough to collaborate with me on Zoom webhook documentation review. Um, and so we wanted to do this video to kind of showcase how people use Zoom's webhooks, and then also uh, a new feature that we've released in Civics Play that helps you verify signatures from Zoom. So uh, Ojuice, you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, Ken. Hi, Tom. Uh, nice seeing you guys again. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Ojas. I am one of the developer advocates here at Zoom, and I'm mainly responsible for our uh, event-driven notifiers, which is like webhooks, web sockets, um, and also some of the APIs, like the REST APIs and GraphQL. Um, so yeah, uh, happy to be here, and thanks for having me again. Yeah, I guess, you know, maybe everybody should introduce themselves, maybe not just so. So I'm Ken, I do growth at Sphix. Uh, Tom? Yeah, I'm Tom, founder and CEO of Sphix, and it was just great to chat again. And I'm actually super excited to see, um, you know, to see the whole flow. Uh, you know, we, we would like play with it ourselves, but obviously without the Zoom expert on the call. So it's always good. Yeah. Yeah, so just do you want to talk a little bit about how Zoom users actually use webhooks in practice? Right. Um, before that, let me just give, like, of course, we are here. Everyone knows what webhooks are, but just giving a quick overview. Uh, webhooks are like real-time notifiers. So here at Zoom, uh, you know, whenever something happens in your account, we want to tell you that in real time. So let's say you want to be notified every time a meeting starts in your account or like some participant joins a meeting, leaves a meeting or the most important, like there are some issues in your meeting and you want to troubleshoot them real time. So we have real time events for uh, like real time notifiers for all such events like these. Um, and we do send them through webhook or websockets. Of course, today we will be discussing about uh, webhooks. So the way it works with webhooks at Zoom is you provide us with an endpoint. And theoretically, we should be sending you those events in real time. But we require you to go through one or two additional processes uh, before we can start sending you those events. Uh, do you want me to go over them, Ken, and why we do that? Yeah, I think that would be really good for people who are just trying to get started with the Zoom webhooks. Perfect. So let me just real quick pull up the Zoom webhook documentation. Uh... Quick plug, we did review these, so we have a blog on our on our blog. <laughs> yeah. Um... So this is uh, the documentation for our webhooks. Um, as I said, you provide us with an endpoint URL, but then when you provide us with an endpoint URL, we need you to validate the endpoint. Now, why validate? Uh, because what we earlier observed was uh, people would just provide us with uh, a webhook endpoint URL and then they would just forget about it. But Zoom, because of our retry mechanisms, we would try to send those events again and again, even if your endpoint was not working. And uh, that caused some, uh, you know, like scaling issues on our end, and which is what we wanted to tackle. So now we require you to validate your endpoint and something that we would be showing you in the demo further. Uh, so what happens with the validation is uh, once you hit on the validate button, we will send you a challenge and then your endpoint needs to basically take care of that challenge. Uh, you can find the steps here. Uh, basically, we'll send you a plain token and then you need to just click create a response JSON object with the plain token and the encrypted token and then respond to us with, uh, you know, like within three seconds with the encrypted token. Once you do that, your endpoint is validated for 72 hours and you can continue to receive events on your endpoint for the next 72 hours. Uh, after the next 72 hours, Zoom will again send you another uh, validation event um, and, uh, you know, you need to keep on validating that in order to continue receiving these events. Now, I remember like, um, you know, James from our team, when he implemented the Zoom support, he mentioned, uh, he mentioned doing that. Um, so it's good to see it from that end as well. Perfect. So shall we dive into the demo? Yeah. So the revalidation. So it's like, okay, once it's validated and working, you have to actually verify each message. Yes. 
no 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 once it's validated and working uh so okay i'm glad you asked that question validation and verification are two different processes mm -hmm. valid think of validation as in like zoom needs to validate your endpoint and you have a, an option whether you want to verify the events that are coming from zoom or not so verification is something that you would want to do on your end uh to make sure that the event that is coming on your endpoint is indeed from Zoom. And we have like various ways that you can do that. One is by just doing it with the Zoom's default header. So what happens is uh, every time Zoom sends an event in the header section, it will send you a secret token. Um, the the verification token is deprecated, I believe, right now. So you would want to watch for this field in your headers. Um, if the uh, value in your headers matches the value in this field, then you can consider that the event is indeed coming from Zoom. We also provide you additional ways to uh, validate the event uh, if you want to validate the event on your own. So we have like basic authentication, we have token authentication, and we also have like a custom header authentication. Now, these options may not be available readily in your um, zoom account so you might have to reach out to developer support if you want to enable these kind of features okay yeah thanks for that explanation yeah i think that's like a key differentiation for sure between the the validation and the verification um so i think tom do you want to talk a little bit about what we did with svix to kind of help support this uh yeah sure thing so you know we created a while back we created a tool called uh, svix play and Sfix Play is essentially a very lightweight way to like debug webhooks. Um, and it kind of has like multiple ways of operating. So like the most basic ones, you just give it a URL and then it can receive webhooks there and you can view, you know, the request, the response. Uh, and you can also use a different mode, which is like what we call Sfix Listen that you run, you know, you run um, a local CLI tool and then kind of like proxies all the data from you know, you receive, you have a public facing URL and it kind of like skips the firewall, skips all of those kind of things and let you have like an easy local development. Um, so all of this is fine and well, uh, until you get to some services like Zoom, for example, that do this extra step of validation. And because all of a sudden, when you try to receive there, you're going to get the val validation request. You're not going to respond to it. And that's it. Zoom is not going to validate the endpoint and you're not going to be able to like look exactly what's going on. Um, so I think we started by just saying, okay, let's add a validation step, you know, have like default Zoom support. So we have the validation step and then we can, you know, we can, we can ensure that we give uh, Zoom what they want in order to, you know, continue receiving the webhooks. And after that, we said, well, you know, like Svix Play already supports Svix in very nice ways. Like you can pass the secret, um, you know, the endpoint secret and, and verify the signature. So we like might as well do that for Zoom as well, and kind of like after like a few steps like these, we we just like ended up with like you know proper Zoom support, and then that's kind of like when you let we let you know and like you let Audrey know, and then we kind of like that's how we got here, I guess. Um, it just we really just wanted to like test it, and and things just evolved that way. So this is a really great tool if you're kind of like just starting out trying to receive Zoom webhooks, and you kind of don't want to go through. The, uh, the effort of kind of standing up an entire endpoint for yourself. So you can kind of just like test it out very quickly using Sfix Play with, with our Zoom support uh, and kind of just like get going and, and see what's going on with the Zoom outputs. Exactly. And you can kind of like, oh, go ahead, Rogers. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to add, yes, uh, tools like these are really, really beneficial, uh, just like Swix. Like, for example, there are times when you have to demo it to customers and it may not be possible to build like a full-fledged working endpoint uh, just to demo them. But having a playground such as Swix uh, will easily enable, uh, you know, people like us to demo, uh, you know, how our webhooks work. So, yeah. No, yeah. Um, I, I think also, I, I don't remember if we told you that, or just, but we also have like some cool features, like, um, like forcing an HTTP status code. So you can give you can give the URL a query parameter and tell it always return a 500. And then it will return a 500. And this way you can also demo like how Zoom retries and how Zoom kind of like presents all of those issues as they come along. Oh, wow, that is so cool. I had no idea about it. So if I understand this correctly, uh, so, okay, with Zoom, what happens is every time you receive a webhook from Zoom, you have to respond with a 200 OK HTTP back. Uh, yeah. That way, Zoom knows that we have delivered the event to you. Um, but 
if you do not then zoom will try to retry sending uh, the events back to you uh, so in this case let's say if i instead of 200 uh, can i tell your playground to send a 500 or a 400 exactly and, that yeah okay okay that is so cool yeah that, why don't we try it out yeah yeah let's try, try getting the demo guy and try it out yeah five minutes for us to um, you know get the first attempt back but yeah let's go ahead and try it out so do you want to walk me through uh, yeah, first of all, let's go to where you would add the endpoint on the zoom, on the zoom end. Okay. Yeah. So in order to uh, test your web hooks, you would first need to build an app in our marketplace. Uh, in order to build an app, click on develop. And for testing purposes today, we are going to build a server to server app type. So give your app a name. I'm going to give it six testing. Hit create. Once you create an app, it will give you the account ID, client ID, and client secret. You need these three credentials to generate an access token to make API calls. We do not need to do that today for testing our web hooks. So directly go to the feature section and enable event subscriptions. Then click on add event subscription. Um, give the event subscription a name. I'm going to give it Swix testing again select the method as webhook. Now, Tom, do you mind guiding me how to get a event notification endpoint URL from Swix? Yeah, so I think first of all, you go to swix.com slash play, which I think we open yeah, in another tab. And just click start now, it's gonna generate a unique key for you. Perfect. Um, and then usually you see the like listening on exactly, you need to copy this URL, but I know that we shared a URL ahead of time with you that you can like use as, as a template. So let's start, let's start from there because it has like the Zoom specific parts, uh, but we can. Perfect, so let me go ahead and grab that URL. Oh. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, so grab the yeah, I meant, Yeah, grab, grab the token, yeah, so copy paste that one, exactly. That's kind of like the, the your Swix, your, um, you know, your Swix token, your Swix play token. And as you can see, like whoever is looking, like we added provider, two query parameters, provider equal, okay, let's copy this. Sorry, we added provider equals zoom and endpoint signings key is gonna be equal to the secret token that OGIS is now gonna copy. Yeah, now we click validate. There you go. That's validate. So I'm going to add events. Uh, for testing purposes, let's do meeting created, updated and deleted. Hit done, hit save, and I think our app, okay, yeah, before you can test the app, you need to provide um, all these details. Hit continue, go to activation, activate your app. So our app is activated, and let's check if we are able to receive the events. So I'm going to generate, like what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, update and delete meetings from my end. And let's see if we are able to see them here. Now, one thing I would like to tell people is that it sometimes takes up to 10 minutes for the endpoint URL configuration to just, you know, like be updated on our end. So for like, when you update or like add a new URL, endpoint URL, um, give it up to like 10 minutes to see if you're receiving the first event or not. Generally, it should be quicker, but I say like give it 10 minutes. For the first event, after that, all the events should be received within three to five seconds. So yeah, I'm going to create a meeting, save. And I think uh -huh. we received that event. Yeah, there you go. Let's update it. I'm going to update this. I'm going to update the date. And I'm just going to make some changes. I guess like a quick question, like how do we know that the that the signature was verified here? Um, yeah. Like how would you I know mean, if it didn't verify? So I, I can answer that. So first of all, this is the, the original validation. And as you can see, we're in the response code, we did response code 200. And that's kind of like our way of saying, okay, we verified the token. And here we can actually see in the response itself, this is like exactly what Zoom requires us to respond in order to like validate the, the endpoint, right? Or just... 
Yes. Yeah, so you see it's like a plain token and an encrypted token um, and, and everything that they require. And you can see, and like if you go back to the second one, to the endpoint created one, uh, the meeting created, sorry, you can see there as well. I mean, here there's nobody, but like in the request itself, you, you can see also we responded with a 200. So that was our way of saying, okay, th this passed. Um, if it was a, a bad signature, we would have seen an error. So it's like, but also like, I, I think, you know, like looking at all of this, you really see like all the Zoom lifecycle just being sent to a meeting was created, a meeting was updated and we can really see and, and, you know, like get, get some like really vivid examples of what is it is actually going on. Yeah, so I can see like, oh, the whole state, I can see like all the parameters that I would expect when I like, creating those kind of things, right? Yeah. Yeah, like including the operator and, uh, and, and, and I think, you know, like we, we've seen it time and time again that, that, you know, there's just no, there's nothing like real data. You know, you can read the docs all you want and you can kind of like ex know what you expect and see like the schema of things, but only when you see like, oh, wait, account ID. Oh, I, I know where that is. I saw it from like in my Zoom account when I like log in, it says the account ID. So this is that and this is this and kind of like really getting this whole understanding of where the data is coming from rather than kind of like this is going to be a random string, um, I think really makes a difference. I think it's nice to see it working in practice as well, right? Actually, the message getting sent and receiving it. And as I said earlier, uh, you know, um, having tools such as Wix, it eliminates the needs, need for developers to build and manage a separate endpoint. Um, with Swix, you can just focus on perfecting, uh, you know, sometimes your application's functionality and like saving time that, you know, you need to build an endpoint uh, if you just want to like, you know, test out the integration. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to test out the webhook part, you know, you don't have to build like the endpoint and all that stuff just like grab mm -hmm. the URL from here and append the secret token to that and you should be ready to go. Yeah. I think we're not going to show it today, but there's also like what I mentioned earlier, like the Swix listen. So like a way to, to have like a tunnel to your local machine. Um, to, and, and I know you have like, surely you have like testing environments you yourself that you built to kind of test Zoom webhooks locally. And I think those kind of tools, you know, you, again, we're not going to demo it now, but like it will open that port and like forward all the requests locally. Mm -hmm. And you'll get the same UI as you as you get here, so you can also like view it, you know, view it in this UI and make sure that every, you know, like all the request headers were what you expected them, all the responses were what ex you expect them to be, etc. Yeah, so uh, hopefully that was useful for everyone to kind of see how you, you know Zoom webhooks are actually used, how you might go up setting up an app, and then how you can you know spin up an endpoint really quickly, switch play to just make sure that the the webhooks are actually working. Uh, so I want to thank Ojus for joining me and Tom on our video today. Um, if anybody has any more questions about how this actually works and the details, uh, just let us know, uh, either in the comments or uh, you can send us a message uh, in our Slack channel, um, and we'll be happy to help. Yeah, and go go check out Svixplay and uh, Zoom Zoom Docs. Start building Zoom applications. Absolutely. With if you have any questions, yeah, if you guys have any questions related to Zoom's developer platform, uh, we have a forum dedicated to that. So that's, uh, you know, uh, devforum.zoom.us. And yeah, we are here to help you in any manner you, you, you need us to. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. See you. See ya. Thank you.